Hey everyone, so this is the recording of the laptop booting up of a hard drive. Um, I will also interpose before this recording, well, during this recording, that uh, I took pictures of the statistics of the computer, which I will also show you here. As in, it's only got 4 gigs of RAM, and that's mostly used up on just startup. As well as the fact that it has a standard hard drive which has spin spinning platters. Um, he asked if there was any way I could speed it up, so I got these. We're going to put this stuff in. See, if, and I'm pretty sure it's going to help because it did help mine. But uh, this is the boot up with a, a normal hard drive and 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, just note, this is going to take a bit. I promise you, it's not locked up, it's not frozen, it's just, it's loading. Now, please note, I did change the password on this. This is not the normal password for this. I just did it so it's easier to load fully the system by logging in once it comes up. Okay. Now you see it came up, it logged right in, but that was a decent amount of time. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up Task Manager, and you see that should have came right up instantly, but it took a bit. Now, CPU is pegged at 90, memory is pegged at 58. Remember, this only has 4 gigs of RAM. And it's just having all kinds of trouble pulling up the list of all active processes. Okay, now the hard drive is at 100% utilization. So we're going to switch over to performance real quick. As you can see, memory is going up. It's using 2.4 gigs. Only thing left available is 1.4. And here's the hard drive. It's maxed out at 100%. And it's only able to read at max 7... Nope. Ping's a little bit above, but it's pretty much... The max it can reach is 7 megabytes per second. And right now it's only reading at like 4.4 .4 at max according to this. Um, this is a 1 terabyte hard drive. Um, but we're tossing in, because he only uses this for writing at the moment. In a few months I can always offer a future upgrade. Because replacing the hard drive in this is easy. However, considering how old the laptop is, I'm going to do a take out the motherboard completely and clean all the internals this way it gets nice new cooling thermal paste and all that stuff but uh yeah if the hard drive always pinged at 100% it's just this laptop is currently very limited yeah it's got a lot of space but what use is that space if it takes minutes or even hours to do something and one of the other reasons I recommended the memory upgrade, uh, it takes the DDR3L standard, only has one slot for RAM, so I got him an 8 gig stick. I have proven before that I'm pretty sure I could put a larger capacity stick in here. However, it's not able to do a dual channel, so we can't even get that. However, with 8 gigs, the fact all he really uses this for is writing, and he doesn't have like thousands of tabs open at a time like I do, this should be enough for his normal daily use. Um, DDR3L runs at 1.35 volts, if I remember right. So, it's not like I can just toss a normal DDR3 module in this laptop. It will most likely not work. And I'd rather give him something that I have researched that will work. So, now that I explained all that, let's take a look at the shutdown time. Now, remember, this will be a before and after comparison so then shut down and shut down
<laughs> like, even shutting down... Okay, that was faster, but when I first started this up, it took about a good minute for the shutdown to happen. It could be the reason it shut down the fastest time, because I did leave it up a little bit longer. Therefore, everything was loaded into RAM, the hard drive wasn't trying to, hey, you need to put more of this in here, yada yada yada. So, uh, alright, uh, we'll get started on tearing it down. Okay, this is one reason I am always offering this as part of labor, as long as they're willing to pay the rest of the labor. If you noticed, this stuff is like cake, or dried out, rocky cake. Like, yes, that little bit there scooping up easily, but... It's just, this is dead. 
And if you notice on here how it's just lightly squeezed out, and I'm not touching the chip to do this. I don't want to damage it. Um, I know I have plastic scrapers somewhere. I, I use this in the uh, non sharpie jaggy in. But if you look at that, core is not fully covered anymore. If you look in there where that long piece is, it matches up with this long piece here. Um, but the rest of it's just dried out. Uh, if this did not have uh, cooling issues before, it would eventually develop them. The reason being, this paste fills in microscopic gaps to help with the transfer of the heat from the CPU to the CPU cooler. Um, I gotta be honest though, this is the cleanest laptop I've ever worked on. And that includes my own. And I clean mine once a month. Overkill, yes. But, it gives me something to do to keep me busy. So what I'm going to do is... <clears throat> Q-tips. Throw me alcohol. Microfiber cloths that leave no lint behind. The first thing I'm going to do is clean up the uh, CPU heat sink. Maybe. Oh, biggest bottle I can buy and they have crap caps on them. But, the reason I use rum and alcohol, 91% is the highest I can get here in the state I live. I can get like 99 if I order it. Go ahead and move this board so none of this falls on here. But, uh, the higher, you never want to go below 90. Uh, for 91% for the uh, IPA. The reason being is the alcohol actually evaporates quickly, and as you can see, I'm having trouble getting this piece off here. It scrapes right up, but as you can see, it came up like a. Uh, I can't even explain it. A shaving, if, if you will. So. I should have done a heat test on this before, but. I can tell you right now, from personal experience, this paste was pretty much gone. So, we'll come back with a Q-tip on this, make sure we get into all the grooves. If you're wondering why I'm using this first, instead of a Q-tip, well, this is the OEM paste, and Dell really shouldn't put this much in it. But, Dell does Dell. I'm also going to pop this fan out of this shroud. Considering it's all one giant piece. And take a look on the inside. See if there's any dust cat gathered there. Oi. Come on. Also, this is a new tools kit. Not one I prefer, but it works. The one I prefer also has the security Torx bits. Now, these screws inside this fan are very, very 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 tiny so make sure you do not lose them or you will never find them again looks like I lost the magnetic on my bit Alright, and then the finish popping the fan out. It looks like it. Yes, it does. Has a little bit of tape here to help direct the airflow. Which I will put back. And then. Where are you? Oh, just popped right out. It does have one of these, so I assumed it had one there, but it didn't. However, this is one of the cleanest fans I have literally ever seen. So, normally I would... Yeah, not a single speck of dust in there. Uh, reason I do that is to make sure that this has room to breathe when I go to put it back together. Just because I don't... I, uh, how do I say this without 
offending people. I don't half-ass a job when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, well, might as well get screws back in there to help me seal the tape back in place. Like I said, these are some of the world's smallest screws. This particular, this is a Dow Inspiron 15. Um, if I remember the specs right from the data sheet, it pulled up from the service tag information off Dell's website. That is an Intel Core i3 on there, which is why this laptop, in my opinion, is still pretty good. Now to fix this little bungle mess I accidentally made. So in order to... Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, mom was coming in to let me know that hamburgers are ready. And yes, my parents still loot me. Something I prefer. Uh. So... Go ahead and put that back on there. Tamp it down best I can. Help the redirect the airflow in there again. So now that I know the fan is actually in good shape and spinning it by hand, I don't feel any play in the bearing. We're going to go ahead and get the motherboard cleaned up, which I'll do once I get back. But for you, it's the next scene. I'll see you in a few. Okay, I don't even know what I was saying originally. Mainly because I just spent a half hour packing up meat to put in the freezer. Yes, I did wash my hands afterwards. But let's get back to this. Um, one of the main reasons I'm cautious about cleaning these and when to use Q-tips is because uh, they're very soft and very good at absorbing this stuff, the uh, ice purple alcohol to help me get all this crap off here. Dell, if you're watching this, if you could make stores that sold your PCs and have them something like, I don't trust Geek Squad personally, but something like Geek Squad where they'll go in within warranty, say, once every six months to replace this stuff, you'd have a good little business venture there. Yeah, this stuff don't want to come up. So, just work on getting it all out of here. And yes, I go through a lot of Q-tips when I do it this way. You're probably wondering why I'm not using both sides of the Q-tip. Uh, I don't want this stuff on my hands, because Dell, HP, all the main manufacturers for things like laptops and pre-built computers, for the most part, don't tell you what thermal paste they use. I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of speculation but they never will ever release what they use as for their thermal paste product. Oh, yeah. And then once again, like I said, with using isopropyl alcohol for this, 
Now there is a product called Arctic uh, Arctic Cleaner that would also work pretty good. It's at it's supposedly designed for this, and it does work pretty good on certain types of thermal paste. <clears throat> but uh, meh. Me, personally, I have just always used IPA, also known as ipropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, also known as, hey, wait, this actually makes my Nintendo game work. Okay, now that that's all done, go ahead and dry it up. One thing I do after this, though, is uh, I inspect the die of the CPU or whatever I'm messing with thermal paste-wise. Because where it's a mirror-like finish there, I can actually use that to help me gauge whether or not there might be something left in there. Which would actually impact a little bit the effectiveness of the new paste. Now you saw me use the other side of this Q-tip. That is perfectly fine. Because there was no more actual paste left. And like I said, I am just finishing up the cleaning. Now from what it looks like, this chip has the Intel graphics on the actual CPU slightly separate. Don't quote me on that. I don't... I haven't kept up with processor design in a while. In a long time, actually. But, uh, I remember the reason, or at least why they do this sometimes. Uh, if I remember right, Intel Core 2 Quad did a similar setup to how Ryzen is built. I don't know why Intel didn't stick with that. But, hey, anyways. But yeah, this is Pretty clean. Okay, and now to go ahead and double check this. And yes, there's still some paste left on the actual heatsink. So we'll set this aside. It's new parts. We're gonna fully scrub this down. You know, I once used like a Brasso style metal cleaner on one of these things before. Comes out really shiny, but that kind of stuff leaves behind residue, so I don't recommend doing that on the actual backlight. Okay. Go ahead and grab the thermal paste. <laughs> And I'm going to have to order more thermal paste because I'm almost out. Hmm. Big tube. Clearly almost out. See if I can see that little black there. It's only down here. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see how this one back together. Now, personally, when I have the... Really? When I have the dyes visible like this, so when it's long, I would normally put a long line for thermal paste there, and then a dot on like what looks square.
The reason for the line is so this way I can make sure the whole die is good to go. Alright, let's go ahead and get this back on here. Now, I always do three twists all the way around, especially because this is only three screws on this one. Then one, two, then one, and then just one all the way around till they're tight. And those two are tight, that's why I finished that one up. Take a look on in there. Good news is it didn't squeeze out past, however I can see that it, well I can't show you on the camera, it's just too thin, but I can see that the paste properly spread in there. Okay, now, now that that's done, we're going back to time lapse mode of me putting the whole system back together. Also, I recommend not getting a bottle that big of isopropyl alcohol unless it has a different cap style than what I got. I'll see y'all in like, it'll be a second for you, I'll see y'all in a minute. Okay, uh, so this is the drive we're going with. I already put the uh, new module for RAM in. I'm not putting the cover in until I make sure this boots up. If it does not, I'll swap RAM again real quick because it'll most likely be a RAM incompatibility issue. Like I said, I did a lot of research to match this up with the specs of this, except for this is uh, 8 gigs instead of 4 gigs. Now, like I said, he mostly uses this laptop for writing and stuff. I did double check how much he used of this drive. It's way under the 128 gigabyte limit of the SSD. Yes, it's 128 gigabytes, but the speeds alone. Remember, when I pulled up the specs on this while it was running, it would only transfer at a burst of 10 megabytes per second. Now this has a read of up to 550 megabytes per second. Wait, no, that's a read. Sorry. A read of up to 550 megabytes per second with a write of up to 420 megabytes per second. It will also come with a three-year warranty. Uh, uses 3D NAND flash technology. As you can see, if you buy this, you'll see it. However, this also, <clears throat> you can download off their website the little toolbox program, which will give you the help of your SSD. Um, this is the brand I recommend for anyone that wants an SSD. Yes, there is SanDisk, yes, there is Patriot, Crucial, Western Digital, and a bunch of other well-named known brands. However, I personally prefer these as, in my opinion, they're the best bang for the buck. I've tried out several different SSD brands, and these have been the most stable for me. Um, as well as the best, like I said, bang for the buck. This was only, I'd have to look it up again, but it was only like 20, 30 bucks or something like that. I'll put the, the actual price in the 
in a little common thing in the video, whatever. Um, but this is a silicon power uh, SATA 3 SSD A55. Um, and it comes with three year warranty. I trust their warranties. I've never had any issues out of arming stuff to them before. So, um, and I do know that they have a hard drive as fast as an SSD, but it just came out and it's freaking massive, as in it won't fit in this case. Probably won't even fit my server, but, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get this opened up. Bio settings, yes, I know. Okay, so that is out of its case. Also, these things are very light. Uh, I got one dismantled somewhere. If I knew where it was, I'd show you what it looks like. Now, the reason I went ahead and did that is so that I can remember how to put this back together. Get off my tool, sticky thing. Okay, so... Uh, of course, it's like that. Looks like they use some kind of sticky adhesive. Which is a good thing, because it'll keep this stuff protected. From accidental contact causing shorts. I'm going to very carefully pull it off. There we go. Um, so, let's go ahead and get it put on here. Oh, still sticks. Okay. Make my life a little more easier. Um, SSDs are a really good upgrade option for laptops that use hard drives just because of the speed. Um, if you ever wanted to, say, reuse your old hard drive if your laptop has a CD drive, they sell adapters uh, where you can toss your hard drive into the CD bay. It's actually what I use on my own personal Dell laptop. However, I, added, I use two SSDs on that. Mainly because I dual boot, but it still doesn't change the fact you could actually buy an adapter to slot this into your CD drive area. So, pull it back off one last time, then lay it back down. Mainly because it's screwed in and now it's at its final location. Um, go ahead and get the little screw holder out. Pop this on in. And then screw it down. Also, that's a chonky one terabyte. Okay. I'm not... I'm going to put this on. I know I said I wouldn't, but I'm not going to put the screw in it. Um, you just plomp it back in and match it up with the holes and then slide it up. And then I'm going to toss the battery in. I don't have the... Whatchamacallit. Um... Uh, I do not have the Windows 10 installation media set up yet. I gotta go do that real quick. But I wanna make sure it boots up. So. I did offer him a new battery, but he turned it down. He mainly keeps us plugged in all the time. So. Internal hard disk drive not found. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna pause this while I figure this out. <clears throat> okay, it was only like two minutes between takes. However, I now have it detecting the uh, SSD. So SPCC, solid state disk, 128 gigabytes, fixed hard drive. And then say the optical disk drive is what was in here before. Um, the way I had to fix this was I had to go over to boot and then uh, enable the legacy boot setup and then switch this over to legacy. Um, so the reason I had to do that is sometimes the SSDs are backwards compatible so you have to go to this option. Yes, UEFI is more secure but that's only on a boot bleh. BIOS level. Um, 
So let's go ahead and try to just back over to UEFI. Uh, and then exit and we'll see what happens. Chances are it will not see the SSD. Now it actually might. Alright, uh, let's see, control up delete. Come into the... Yep, it still sees it. Um, save changes, exit, reset. Alright, we're going to hit F12 to make sure it can actually see it for boot options. So as you can see, here's the UEFI options. I honestly think once I get Windows 10 reinstalled, it will insert a UEFI option for the SSD. But as you can see, it sees the hard drive right there. Now, when you're in <clears throat> uh, the boot mode from BIOS, it will only show what you have. It won't show all the extras like it will in BIOS. So the good news is it has diagnostics, inner setup, yada yada, change boot mode setting. This is really good to get into should your hard drive be acting up because at least this way you can see if it's actually in there if the BIOS can't see it for some reason. So, uh, yeah, that's all there is to this. I'm going to go ahead and get Windows installed uh, and figure out how to get his files transferred because I can't find my dock station anywhere. I will see you all in... when I see you. Bye. Okay, people. As you saw in today's video, I did a full teardown of the laptop. I am going to clean the screen and stuff before I give it back to the customer. Uh, <clears throat> this laptop was one of the easiest to work on. It was extremely clean on the inside, uh, which shows it's been very well taken care of. The thermal paste, as you saw, was basically, once again, similar dry clay. Still had some slight wetness to it, but it was it was bad, in my opinion. So I went ahead and replaced that. Um, I also checked the fan. The fan runs okay. Only thing I have not replaced on this that it needs replaced is the battery. Um, the reason being is he keeps it plugged in all the time. Uh, so... He said he didn't want to get a battery. I'm not going to push someone against something that they don't technically need if they're not going to use that part. And uh, the password will be changed again. So, anyways, uh, as you can see, this thing boots up insanely fast. I reinstalled Norton 360 per the request. I have Microsoft Edge as the primary browser. Um, as you noticed, everything is opening up insanely fast. Now, while the CPU is pinging at 100%, it's non-replaceable, but this laptop, now because of this change, easily has, I'd say, a couple more years of life left in it. Um, unfortunately, this laptop cannot be updated to the upcoming Windows 11. Um, I disagree with Microsoft's requirement to have a TPM 2.0 module. Just because, as a result, there's going to be so much e-waste once Windows 10 is no longer a uh, supported operating system by Microsoft. Um, I did not charge for the Windows installation. It already had a copy of Windows 10 on it. And I included the installing of the Windows 10 itself as part of the normal labor, as in normal t the teardown and all that. Um... But yeah, this computer is running really fine. Uh, let's go ahead and get one thing installed on here, just so you can see the speeds that it's running at now. Now, no, I am cheating a little bit because it is on my uh, gigabit network. So... Huh, oh, solar ones looks like they bought out. Oh! Huh. CPU ID, come here, you. But yeah, um... As you can see, this is running insanely fast now. Like, it took me about five minutes just to get to even something like this point back on the hard drive. I did. You will have seen a comparison between the two systems, one with the SSD and upgraded RAM, and one with just the original uh, hard drive and RAM. I'm going to ask what he wants me to do with this hard drive. Uh, so, don't know what that's going to be done with that yet. Anyways, uh, 
it's it mirrors a lot of free based websites now having that kind of pop up anyways off the tangent Uh, the main reason I'm installing a hardware monitor, like I said, I did repaste it, and I want to make sure that it's good to go. Yes, it is good. That was insanely fast. I really should have done it before and after for the cooling, and I accidentally closed that out. <laughs> I forgot to install uh, Prime 95 real quick. Um, Prime 95 is a testing utility that several people that check temps and stuff run. Others can be also Furmark or uh, SETI at home or things like that. This is why I don't like mouse pads. Oh, did we do? Uh, let's see. P95. Of course, everyone's been looking up masks because of the pandemic. Now, I actually gotta type in Prime95. But what I used to do is just type in P95. I'm gonna bring this up right away. So, this is designed to calculate the square root of pi or something like that. Uh,. Anyways, so we're just going to go ahead and get the zip for 64-bit, because I do have this at 8 gigs of RAM now. Open file. Do, 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 do. Compress folder tools. Extract all. Show extracted when done. Close you. Okay. Go ahead and close this. Hey, what you doing? Bad boy. Go away. It was opening up Norton. Uh, I am still waiting on the customer to send me the login details for their Norton. So, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but right now temps are pretty typical for a laptop. They're about 52, 53C. So, what we're going to do is run Prime95 and make sure this cools down properly. Uh, let's see, we want the highest heat. Maximum power, heat, and CPU stress test. Okay. And then pop this back up. And I'm going to let that run for a bit. While that's running, I'll finish up my outro for the video. Um, this is not bad. I only charged 30 on labor. And he wound up paying about $83 total. So about $50-ish for parts. Which one was the SSD and one was the RAM. Um... I know a lot of people don't care for budget brands, but I will say this, ATEC, they do really good. I'm not sure if they recycle RAM or what, but it, you, they use actual good chips on their stuff. Um, I rec highly recommend ATEC. It's not just that they had the RAM for this, they also have RAM for even older computers and new computers all together. Uh, it's where I got the SD RAM for my Windows 98 build. Uh, right now it's running as 61C. So, yeah, this is running really good. Anyways, back to the outro. Um, the only thing I would recommend is a battery, but like I said, he doesn't take it anywhere. He just uses it to type on. Um, he is a big Doctor Who fan, as well as, I'm gonna say comic book, because I don't want him smacking me upside the head. Uh, see, I'm pretty sure it's DC. And he's a Marvel fan. Anyways, he likes the laptop. I hope he likes the new upgrades. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Please press like. Uh, subscribe. Tell me what I can do better on my videos.
I know I've been doing this for a while now, but it just... I want to be better at this so that I can provide a better... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A better experience for my videos. Um... Anyways, I will see you all later. It is currently 9.47 at night, and I am really tired. I will talk to you all later, uh, and expect the next video in a week or two from now. Bye!